All right, good evening, and it is bourbonblog.com live. I'm speaking with my friends from the Fighting 69th Regiment Irish Whiskey, fairly new Irish whiskey. It's really great stuff. I'm a big fan of Irish whiskey, and, you know, actually I am part Irish, so I think that probably does help. It is the master blender, Chris Leskowitz, Colonel Jim Tierney also joining us, and Scott Reed. Good evening, gentlemen. I guess we all have some Irish whiskey in hand then, don't we? Pour a little bit here. Absolutely. We're waiting and, for you to uh, give us the give us the <laughs> we all have, I got the Irish whiskey at hand. And uh, why don't we go, we'll go around what we call the, it's, we say we go around the circle, but it's actually more of a square. And I'll have each of you tell me about what you do with the brand, and then we'll talk about the brand itself, and we'll uh, we'll taste some. Uh, you want to go? Want to go first, Chris? Tell us about the uh, being a master blender there. Well, I guess that's the easy. Yeah, but always it's always good to have something to sip on while you listen to me or somebody else. Um, like most whiskeys, it's got a great story behind it. But what I want to get into is um, I'm getting dry. I have to put some in the glass. Um, what this is, it's a um, blended whiskey, and um, we first heard about the regiment. We put together on this project, and um, unlike a lot of things, it was first to find out what the regiment was about, to see what who was going to be drinking it, and who we were the target audience, not target, but who was being done for, because this is for the regiment. So um, being it's all American, a lot of Irish and American at that point, I said, you know, and I worked with the people. I said, why don't we do a combination? of um, put the America in there. So we, when I did the uh, over to Ireland and tasted a lot of different distilleries and barrels, I said, let me go with some heavier bourbon in that. And um, I used a combination of uh, single and double chars. Uh, I used a little bit of uh, port in there just to fatten it out. Now these are a combination of uh, barley, uh, malt, and with, um, as they say, maize, but as you might say corn. But what I wanted to do is, a lot of people say that what they don't care about Irish whiskey, it's got a bite. And I was like, you know, I've worked with some good people of bourbon over the years, and I was like, what? We don't need to have a bite. So, made the blend without a bite. So what we did is we, I put the bourbon in there. If you if you, you can smell that in, the, it's a single and double char. It's very easy, got a nice nose to it. Yeah. And a little bit of fruit. But as you put it in, it's got a fullness of pork. Put that on your tongue. Excuse me. Well, and at the at the, um, at the regiment, the toast is to the regiment. And as you taste it, it's very easy going down. Now it's finished with a little bit of sherry cask. Not that it's sweet, but I took that bite off the back side, so it doesn't have that beat. Most people say, "Oh, there's no bite." It's very smooth. So that, that so the fruit finishing. I designed it as a it's more. So yeah, so the, the I'm, I'm perfect. Got, excuse uh, me? Yeah, per perfect introduction, you know, to the uh, to the brand. So, Tom, just a, a little bit of background before we get going. So we've got, you know, obviously Chris Leskowitz, our uh, master whiskey blender, taster. Um, I mean, all, all things science and art. And then we've got Colonel James Tierney, retired from the uh, 69th Regiment and the honorary colonel of the Trust. Yes. Um, and, you know, you and I have known each other for a long time. So, yeah. you know, uh, I, I'm here in Louisville. You're, you're down the road uh, a little bit. Uh, Colonel Tierney is in D.C. And Chris is up in New York. And uh, so anyway, just a little bit of background on the brand. So this, is, this really is a, a tremendous uh, brand. Obviously, Irish whiskey, distilled, aged, bottled in Ireland. But this is really a celebration of both... Ireland and America, because it really is named for the most storied, honored regiment right. in U.S. Army history, which is the 69th Infantry Regiment, also known as the Fighting 69th, and also part of the uh, original Irish Brigade back from uh, 1849. So Colonel Tierney will get into lots more about the the history and just the the, the great fabric of uh, of the history of, of the, the regiment. But, um, you know, th this is a, uh, this is an Irish whiskey, the, the brand as, as many people will see. So, you know, the brand really celebrates, um, all things Ireland and, yes. you know, the, it really, the, the label and the package are a great history lesson that honor all of the great, 
symbols and icons of the the history of the regiment. So what we yeah. wanted to do was really introduce a brand that not only celebrates Ireland and the original American brigade from the, the Civil War era uh, through today, it's still, you know, the longest running active uh, unit in, in the Army, uh, but also is, you know, a, a brand that really is um, uh, worthy of, you know, the name of the Fighting 69th. So really, you know, the brand was just recently introduced in November uh, in New York City. And we had, a, we had a chance, you know, we're now in, in eight states and wow. we brought some over initially for a soft launch in the fall and we sold out immediately. And so we were out of stock until right before Christmas. And so anyway, so th that's sort of the background on the brand itself. But, you know, let's talk more about what everyone is interested in, which is uh, both the whiskey, which Chris can talk a little bit more about. And then let me introduce Colonel Tierney. Yes. Who has a, a storied background. Um, you know, the, the when we when we introduced the brand back in uh, right before the week before Thanksgiving up in New York City, many of you may have seen our, our broadcast. Um, we, we introduced the brand. And one of the one of the great things about it is it celebrates and donates to the 69th Regiment Historical Trust. So right. the trust supports supports uh, the troops, the families, the veterans, the armory, and the mission of uh, the 69th Regiment. So it really is a uh, a, a a brand that that gives back. So as uh, as one, I can't claim the uh, claim the quote, but I'll, I'll attribute it to our good friend Pete Hexep. And Pete may be tuning in tonight, uh, drinking for a cause. So uh, we, think, we think it's a great brand. Exactly. But uh, Colonel Tierney, do you want to say a couple of words? Uh, I have actually, <clears throat> the only thing I have to do with the brand is uh, I'm a trustee of the uh, 69th Infantry Regiment Historical Trust and, and the brand contributes to the trust. Uh, uh, I'm on the regimental staff. Everyone in the United States Army has to be in a regiment. And the regiment has a physical location and houses in the armory on uh, Lexington Avenue. Uh, it also has a staff, <clears throat> but in order to serve on the staff, you must be retired from the army and have served in the regiment. So uh, the regiment is responsible by army regulation and it's established by army regulation for lineage, honors, tradition, and history. So uh, we try, the regimental staff, we try to instill a sense of history and belonging to the soldiers. So, I mean, that's my role. Excellent. Uh, that's, no, that's incredible. So tell, us, tell us who is, I mean, I know there's a long history there. Tell us about the history of the 69th Regiment. Who are they? And, and this history goes back a long ways. In uh, the conception of the regiment uh, goes back to a rebellion in Ireland in 1848. It was called the Young Ireland Rebellion. The leader was uh, is someone named William Smith O'Brien. And one of the other leaders was uh, Thomas Francis Marr. Now, Marr created the Irish tricolor, their national flag. Uh, when Ma presented the flag in Dublin, the tricolor flag, the orange, green, and white, he, uh, he, he said that the orange is the Irish Protestant and the green represents the Irish Catholic and the white is the peace between the two. Uh, and when he presented it, William Smith O'Brien called for raising an Irish brigade in New York City and training them in the militia the National Guard. So within weeks, independent Irish companies were formed in Manhattan. They were made up of Irish immigrants and, and Irish Americans. Wow. And that evolved into three regiments in 1854. There were three regiments, all of them were in our lineage. And then they were consolidated in 1858 as the 69th Infantry Regiment. And the purpose of the regiment was to go back to Ireland 
and fight the British because in, in 1850, they just come out of the potato famine, the Great Famine, and uh, they weren't allowed to, you know, use their language. They weren't allowed to attend church. They weren't allowed to uh, have land, carry weapons, assembling groups. So uh, the idea was, if you wanted to train, you would join the 69th and then go back and fight in Ireland. Well, what happened was in 1861, the Civil War broke out and the 69th went to the Civil War as, as part of another Irish brigade. And Marr, who was captured in 1848, Thomas Francis Marr, he uh, commanded the Irish brigade. He escaped. He, he was sentenced to be hung, drawn, and courted. Uh, along with O'Brien, but uh, they commuted it. They were sent to Tasmania. He, es he escaped and came to New York and, and joined the 69th. Uh, fought in the Battle of Bull Run. And then when he came back, he convinced uh, President uh, Lincoln to form an Irish Brigade. And then he commanded the Irish Brigade during the Civil War, 1862 and 1863, he commanded the Brigade. The Brigade fought in all the major battles. And of course, that in, in, in World War I, they were in France, uh, part of the 42nd Division. MacArthur was the chief of staff of the division. Uh, some of the famous people from World War I was uh, William Donovan, Wild Bill Donovan, who in World War II organized and commanded the OSS, the Office of Strategic Services, the forerunner of the CIA. Uh, he's, the CIA really will tell you that he's the father of the CIA. If you go to the website, you can read all about Donovan. But he was one of our guys, and he received the Medal of Honor. Uh, father Duffy. Father Duffy is a very famous chaplain, wrote a book called uh, Father Duffy's Story, which was the basis of the movie with Pat O'Brien and James Cagney, The Fighting 69. I don't know if you ever saw the movie, but uh, uh, it was a big movie in the 40s and 50s. Uh, so uh, those two were then uh, Joyce Kilmer, who was a very famous poet at the time. Uh, Joyce uh, wrote Trees. He was a sergeant in the 69th. He was killed in the 69th, Joyce Kilmer. And of course, then in World War II, they were back with MacArthur uh, in the Pacific. They, uh, they fought at Macon, they fought in uh, Saipan and Okinawa. Uh, they, they went to Iraq and uh, they, their mission was to guard Route Irish, which was the most dangerous road in, in the world. It was from the green zone to the airport. And they actually tamed Route Irish. So, uh, and then of course they were in uh, about, about 350 of the soldiers from the unit were in Af Afghanistan too. And today they're out on the streets of New York with the coronavirus, they're in uh, testing sites and hospitals and places like that. Wow. So it's a National Guard unit. It's been a New York unit for uh, forever. It's so always been there with, with so much history. In fact, from what I was told, the uh, is it the, the, the Notre Dame, the team is named partially after the Fighting Irish? Yeah, the, the 69th was called the Fighting Irish. That's, that's a great The Fighting 69th was a name uh, given to them by Robert E. Lee. Okay. Uh, he was the commander of the Army of Northern Virginia, the Confederate uh, Army of Northern Virginia. And at the Battle of, uh, they, they say, at the Battle of Fredericksburg, he, he, he said, oh, the Fighting 69th, and the name stuck. <laughs> but they also called him the Fighting Irish. Uh, at Gettysburg in 1863, July, first of the fourth, uh, the commander of the Irish Brigade asked Father Corby, who was the chaplain, one of the chaplains of the brigade, to give the troops general absolution. And Corby got a, up on a rock and the soldiers knelt down and they gave him general absolution. That's portrayed in a lot of movies. That was in Glory and a lot of the, the Civil War, the uh, Gettysburg movie that was portrayed in there. But um, Corby then, after the Civil War went on, became the president of uh, Notre Dame. And uh, that's where they adopted the name the Fighting Irish. Fighting Irish. Well, this is, uh, 
it's it's quite a spectacular whiskey. And, and wh where did the idea c come from to actually create a whiskey in honor of the Fighting 69 Regiment? How did this? How did the idea come about? Well, our regimental cocktail it goes back to the Battle of Fredericksburg in uh, December 1862. Mar, who commanded the brigade, loved Irish whiskey and Vichy water. So he sent his aide out to get some Vichy water in Fredericksburg during the battle. I mean, one of the lulls of the battle. And they couldn't find it. And the kid came back with champagne. And Maul mixed the whiskey and the champagne. And he kind of liked the taste. And it became our regimental cocktail ever since. And we drink that at all regimental affairs. We mix the uh, Irish whiskey and the champagne. And that's our cocktail. So it's some Irish whiskey and some champagne. Yes. So uh, nice. Waterford, Ireland, hosts the 1848 tricolor celebration because the first time uh, Mar displayed the tricolor was in Waterford. So about eight years ago, I was over. I was going over to be part of it because the regiment usually is part of the uh, celebration. And I said to the uh, commander of the battalion at the time, I said, well, I'm going to drop in at some of the breweries and see if we can get a label, just a label, on a bottle for us, you know? So I, I did, and uh, really no one was interested. And then one of the, one of the uh, individuals from the brand, his daughter was, we have a club at the Armory, an officer's club. And his daughter was the, uh, the, the representative for the brewery, you know, where we buy the, the beer and whiskey. And she brought her father at the shore around because in the armory, it's, it's, it's really a mini museum. And he worked for the brand and uh, that was a while ago and they've been working on it ever since to launch it. So that's... It's, it's, a great, it's a great story and a, and a really great whiskey as well. Um, very tasty stuff. Should we, are, does everybody have some there in front of you? Yeah, everybody have, well, is there a toast that you guys do, an, an Irish toast? That's, uh, the regiment is the regimental toast. Yes, sir. The regiment. To the regiment. To the regiment. To the regiment. Cheers. That's now, now, in, interestingly enough, just a, yeah. another another side story here, because this this regiment is so rich in in history and authenticity. But um, the interesting thing is, so every year since 1851, the 69th leads the St. Patrick's Day down Fifth Avenue in New York City. Wow! So. In recent years, tradition is that at 6 a.m. in the commanding officer's office, the officers get together, have a little uh, sip of Irish whiskey, and they toast to the regiment. So they do that, then uh, march all the way up to St. Patrick's Cathedral. And having been there uh, actually last year, the amazing thing about mass at St. Patrick's Cathedral is you would think that it's in honor of who else? St. Patrick, right? Right. No, not at all. The entire mass is dedicated to the men and women of the 69th Infantry Regiment. And it wow. really is a, a, a powerful uh, uh, mass with Colonel, I, I don't know, uh, four or 500 uh, members of, of the regiment yeah. present in the cathedral. It probably takes up, you know, half of the cathedral itself. And, the you know, Cardinal Dolan, uh, leads the mass, celebrates the mass, and I think they mentioned St. Patrick once, and <laughs> the entire the the sermon and everything else. It's all about the men and women of the Fighting Six, and uh, you know how they've dedicated, sacrificed their lives for freedom, and you know everything else that you that it's the honor and glory of of the military, and right. you know for all these men and women, it's like this is a mass celebrating them, and then from there. Uh, they go out and actually lead the parade and have, this would have been the 170th year. And in fact, the, uh, the parade committee and selected members of the 69th actually did carry on that tradition, which was sanctioned by the, by the, the city and, and I guess the governor of uh, the state of New York, 
to actually march from the armory up to St. Patrick's Cathedral, get a blessing, and then uh, from there, uh, you know, disbanded. So the, the St. Patrick's Day Parade this year has been postponed, but we're but, all planning on being there whenever they uh, uh, let it open again, maybe, I don't know, September, October. It'll be a great celebration. That'll be, that'll really be great. And you'll have a, have the Irish whiskey there as well. I'm sure the um, uh, Jim and Chris, and of course I see this flag behind you, Scott, the, uh, the flag behind uh, Colonel Tierney and Chris, that is the, uh, that is the fighting 69 flag. That's, that's the actual flag for the regiment. That was uh, what we call the first Irish color. The Irish brigade units carried the first Irish color, the green flag with the harp and the, Fidian sunburst on the top, and then uh, it has the shamrocks uh, running along the bottom. Uh, the first Irish color was carried up until and including Antietam in 1862. And then it was so shot up, it was re the, the, the flags were returned to New York and we received the second Irish color, which is it, it, another flag, but President Kennedy presented the second Irish color, our flag, to the Irish people in uh, 1963. And it hangs now, it's considered one of the national treasures of Ireland. They love Kennedy, you know, wow. so and they love the 69th. Uh, it hangs in the Leinster House, the seat of the Irish Parliament in Dublin. So it hangs right outside the Senate chamber. So that's right. That's really cool. The uh you want to, do we want to talk a little bit about the whiskey? How you how you blended the whiskey, Chris? Uh, what what this is? Yeah, we're getting we're getting thirsty. Kind of Chris, let's tell us a little bit more about the uh, the whiskey. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, I've got I've got it. It's fun to hear about all of it. Um, so what what I do is again I uh, we put the the bourbon in there. Uh, it's a combination of three to six year olds. Uh, some of it's a single char, some of it's a double char. I get a little bit more of um, some vanilla out of that, and you got a nice bourbon, a smaller bourbon in the nose. You can pick that up front. The malt is in there, um, and it, I just made it so it's it's a soft, easy. It's a drinker. I always like a drinking whiskey versus a sipper because I like to have more than one. And as you know, with some bourbons, you can only have one. Some scotches, you have one, you're full. Some drinks, you want to have another, like this one. So it, it came through. Um, the first the first batch came in. We actually brought um, the blend to the armory, uh, to the officers' club, and let them uh, taste it. They liked, like they liked a lot, and we did from there. So we did a, a fair amount, um, and we brought it in late October, early November, thinking I had enough to take us through January because it was the wrong time of the year for rollout. Right. Um, then it was Pete Hayes has mentioned to other people, and it was in what we thought was good for three months was gone in two weeks. So I guess he was on a plane back to Ireland and recognized yeah, way quick. <laughs> so we uh, and now the it trick is always to make fun. sure it's consistent, which is what. Uh, so so again, some of the um, some of the Irish whiskey has been uh, aged in used bourbon casks. Did you say some was finished in port casks in this? Is that right? Some is port pipe, some is uh, sherry butt. Sherry butt. Uh, a little bit of uh, not got, but I've got some of the single char cask and some double char cask in the bourbon. Okay, so this is okay. So you you bring that different. So it really there's a a variety of complexities I, in this glass that that give it the flavor that it has. Oh yeah, yeah, it does have a lot of complexity for an Irish whiskey. Uh, the the age yeah I, I think it, it goes down. I remember the story, uh, there's been some kind words said about me I think um, but they do like the whiskey it says it's a little bit complex but it's the idea is to make it you know it's it's uh, tasting of this is the right barrel that's the right barrel let's put this in and then to keep it consistent all the time and, right. and that's what whiskey's about isn't it you know I, I realize distilling is a science and uh, they say blending is an art well I, I I'm like a chef. I cook, you know, I, I smell, I taste, we, we work from there, and that's how we make our whiskey. Isn't that tradition? That's always a tradition. You've done a, you've done a yeah. splendid and job of it. 
and and when we're when we're over in Ireland, uh, and if you watch Chris at work, I mean, we go into the the barrel houses and you know look at the different lots and the ages and the finishes and and you know the, it you know as most Irish whiskeys, unless they're a hundred percent malted barley to be called a, a single malt, they're they're blends technically. They're so blend. all the all the leading brands brands that you hear about that you, that that are the you know leading Irish whiskey brands are blends. Right. And so Chris goes in, and one of the things he said was, "Look, you know, some Irish whiskeys can be a little bit thin compared to you know the American uh, palate, which is trained on probably bourbons more than you know Irish whiskey." So going in, said, "You know, let's make this a little bit." something that'll appeal more to the American palate. Right. And so we've got, as you can taste from this, it's got a much uh, more complex finish character. It, it's not a, even though it's 80 proof, I mean, this really is a, uh, a complex distillate. And to watch the artist at work when he goes over and says, he, you know, he's got the thief and he's grabbing little samples from different barrels. He goes, oh, this is a great one over there. And I taste it all and, you know, I, I'm not a chemist or an artist when it comes to that whiskey. So I, I think it all tastes pretty good, but you really need the artist to put this blend together. Right. It does have a lot of nice complexity and nice. It, it really showcases the grains. I've said often, you know, Irish whiskeys that I really enjoy really showcase that really beautiful array of grain um, texture, flavor. This, this definitely does that. Um, you know, it's it has a nice crisp finish. It's 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 very nice. I really like this a lot. What's the do you do you talk about? I know these are a variety of whiskeys. The general ages of these whiskeys. Do you do you tell kind of approximately what what we're looking at here? These are about a three to a six year old. You know, it three depends to... upon um, uh, the flavors of what I'm looking at. As, as you know, it depends on where it's been stored in a, in a rick house, how the age is is taken to it. So I I, don't, I rely more upon my my palate, and my nose, that I rely upon numbers. Uh, same reason we give out, we do tastings. We give, we don't give them tasting notes until afterwards, so they pay attention to what they're smelling and tasting. So we have a good time with it. But it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy going over. I know uh, Colonel Tierney wants to take the next trip with me. Right now, <laughs> we're a little bit difficult getting into Ireland, but um, thank the Lord for DHL sending over samples. It's an interesting way of doing it. Now, no, that sounds fun. Here's if you've tried it, tell us down below if you've tried it. Ask any questions you have right here to these gentlemen. Any questions about the Fighting 69th, the, the whiskey itself, or about Irish whiskey? Ask them down below. Here's a gentleman uh, right here that says he's had it. I think I clicked that the right way. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, Dennis says it's smooth yet bold. So Dennis has uh, given that a try. And uh, Stephen is. Says he's waiting for this whiskey in Michigan. He's looking forward to when it'll be in Michigan. I, I would presume there's some places online where you can find this uh, to buy this. Is that true? Actually, it, it is. It is. Well, it's in it's, one, uh, one of the few states it is in uh, right it's now. It's actually available in Michigan. Okay, so Stephen, it's now available in Michigan. If it's not available, right. so tell so, us the so state it's in, and I guess tell us where uh, where we can find it. Yeah, so quick quick rundown of the states where it is available. So as you would expect, you know, New York and then the tri-state area, so New Jersey, Connecticut. Right. Uh, we're in D.C. and Maryland. Right. And then also Georgia, Florida, and then Michigan, and and uh, we just recently launched Colorado as well. Excellent. And uh, Massachusetts will be probably in the next uh, thirty to sixty days. 30 to 60 in mass there. And yeah, so, uh, so, uh, yeah, so, so our Michigan, fr our Michigan friend, absolutely. Uh, check out the uh, store locator on our website and it'll take you to the closest store. You can find it there, Stephen. That's great. And Leslie Bean uh, Goatsman uh, says, love this whiskey. She always tries to sell it at her liquor store that she works at, which is in Colorado Springs. So uh, that's good. Ah, there we go. Right. The fans there in Colorado. There's a good chance I'm What's that? There's a good chance I was there. I was. That was one oh, of my last did. trips before COVID. <laughs> she she may have met you there. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it's it's very nice stuff. So uh, when it comes to 
obviously delicious whiskey by itself. The cocktail that is in honor of the Fighting 69th again is several parts whiskey and champagne. How do you make the cocktail? Well, the, the official. That's my. Day, the commander's reception, various times that the, the unit is together. Yeah. It's a ceremony that we mix it and it goes through the history. Oh, and, yeah, but celebratory occasions where we'll mix it and you have to use it in the in the silver bowl. And uh, so it really is about everyone getting together and celebrating at, uh, at official celebrations. And it's uh, it's actually quite uh, delicious. It's uh, it's. I bet that would be really nice. Any other, um, I mean, there's so many good Irish whiskey cocktails. Are there any other that, that you gentlemen enjoy as far as uh, cocktails that go particularly nice with this one? Well, I, I, I personally uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, love a, uh, a Fighting 69th Old Fashioned. It makes a great Old Fashioned. I bet it does. Um, yeah. But, you know, a, a, a lot of the, you know, bourbon cocktails are, are paving the way in a lot of instances. So there's a lot of uh, actually craft cocktails being made. Irish whiskey up until now has, hasn't been as much of a cocktail brand, but it really is catching on. So right. uh, back in, uh, in December and in January when we were in New York, a lot of the Irish bars are really, I mean, they, they obviously... It's amazing how many of the uh, of the Irish bars and restaurants up there. Obviously, they know about the 69th and the regiment down at uh, Lex. Uh, I mean, it made some some when you you looked at it, you said, "Wow, I wonder how this will taste." And absolutely phenomenal. So it really is uh, lending itself well to the whole mixology movement. That's uh, that is great. Now, Irish whiskey has really it's made a big comeback, as all whiskeys have, and this is a uh, a very special one and a lot, a lot more questions and folks watching. And again, thanks everyone who's watching. We're going to continue a little bit longer with these gentlemen. If you have any questions there for the Colonel Scott or uh, Master Blender, uh, Chris Leskowitz, please ask him down below and make sure that you do join us every night uh, right here on Bourbon. The best place to find us is bourbonblog.com forward slash live. We broadcast on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube simultaneously. But if you just want to remember, Bookmark it. Tell your friends to bookmark it. Always a good drink, good whiskey for you at 8 p.m. Eastern time every single night. Uh, might be, I'm trying to remember because this is about 55 episodes. This might be the first Irish whiskey we've done, which is great because we've done a little bit of scotch, some bourbon, some rice. But I think you all are our first Irish whiskey. Iris, <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied. Irish whiskey of this series. I should just say it in an Irish accent, shouldn't I? Then it'd be a lot better. You're the first of the series, and uh, it's exciting to have you all. And um, someone asked, "What is the, um, what are some traditions with the Fighting 69th coin uh, that you can tell us about?" The coin? Yes. The challenge coin. The challenge coin. You have. You have you are. That goes. <clears throat> we have uh, various challenge coins. The commander has one that he gives out, the commander of the battalion gives out for uh, exemplary uh, service. Uh, and then we have the regimental coin. And it, it goes back to what they do in the officers' clubs throughout the army. Oh, you have your coin. Oh, I have my coin. Yeah, look, he has it. There it is. It's not uh, if you're in a, in a club and you take out your challenge coin and you slap it on the bar, that's the challenge. And everyone has to take out a coin. And if you don't have your coin with you, you have to buy the bar around. But if everyone has the coin, then, you know, then you have to buy. The, the challenger has to buy everyone. Right. So that's the, but there's a lot of traditions in the 69. Uh, we wear sprigs of boxwood on St. Patrick's Day. Everyone wears them. Because in 1862, in December, at the Battle of Fredericksburg, the flag that you can see behind Chris uh, 
was sent back to New York and the second Irish color hadn't arrived. So the soldiers put sprigs of boxwood in the hats. So we, we do that all the time. We carry blackthorn sticks in this year. So. The blackthorn tree in Ireland is, is a mystical uh, tree going back to the Druids and things like that. But we carried blackthorn sticks and these were actually made up by the brand and given to all the officers uh, for St. Patrick's Day this year. Unfortunately, the parade didn't, didn't uh, happen. Uh, some of the volunteers from the battalion marched uh, along with the uh, the uh, parade committee, about 10 people from the parade committee. Uh, our regimental march is the Gary Owen. It's the same march as the 7th Cavalry had, but they they took it from us. Uh, you've already heard the regimental cocktail. Uh, we attend the tricolor celebration, and, and I think that Scott told you about the commander's toast. Uh, and of course, we're called the Fighting 69. And that that's the name that the Army, the nickname that the United States Army awarded to us. So, wow. And that's a lot more traditions that we, we could go on all day long about the traditions. And a challenge court yeah. on tradition. So you, you so so Jim Jim you mentioned uh, Father Corby right and Notre right. Dame Father Corby at Gettysburg so, so, right right and gave absolution and actually rose his hand to give the blessing of absolution and he he actually became so he was a chaplain in the Irish Brigade he became the third president of Notre Dame University of Notre Dame. So he moved to South Bend. He brought the nickname, the Fighting Irish, with him and lent it to the sports teams, which are now well known as the Fighting Irish. But if you go to Notre Dame and go out to Corby Hall on campus, there's a statue of Father Corby, you know, raising his hand in absolution. And the name that they've, uh, the nickname they've given him is Fair Catch Corby. So uh, there's, there's touchdown Jesus, you know, <laughs> you know, with Jesus, uh, the savior right. with his arms uh, outstretched that you can see from the football stadium, there's fair catch Corby and uh, Chris, the, the other, uh, the other one. First down, first down Moses. The first yeah, one. Right. You want it, first you down Corby, Moses. Corby, okay. Moses with his finger up first down. And of course, touchdown Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well known. If you want yeah, to, so, so, the yeah, Irish have done everything. Of, there's a lot of symbolism. And if you want to see a statue of uh, Thomas Francis Marr, who was the commander of the Irish Brigade, he, he commanded one of our lineage units. Uh, he was also the, after the war. He was the governor of Montana. It was a territory at the time. But if you wanted to see his statue outside of Ireland, in Ireland he's a pretty uh, big number, but. You want to see his statue, believe it or not, it's in front of New York, New York in Las Vegas. On, oh, wow. Yeah. So if you go to Las Vegas in front of the, uh, the casino, and there's a bar in the casino called Nine Famous Irishmen, and number one on the list is, is Thomas Francis Marr. That you can find right there, and you can actually, uh, from what I understand, visit the uh, 69th Regiment Armory in in New York. It's a it's a not right area. now. Uh, there's major construction going on, and right of course with COVID nineteen, you can't do right. anything. And the units right. deployed, so all the soldiers are in the armory all the time. So right. And someone is asking uh, a lot of great questions here. I think a lot of fans that you have um, here. And by the way, the. Uh, the the, uh, the lady that you met, Chris, she, you did meet her. She was at, at Coltrian Wine and Spirits there in Colorado Springs. So a lot of people that you've met uh, from Colorado logging on. Uh, someone's asking, what about the motto and the warpounds? The uh, the motto of the regiment is gentle, gentle when stroked, fierce when provoked. And that is the motto of the, uh, the Irish wolfhound. Uh, on St. Patrick's Day, uh, the Irish Wolf Fountain is our, our mascot. And if you can see the flag, well, you can't see it on the flag. If you can see the regimental crest, wait, 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 w
the, the, I the see rest that, yeah. here is wolfhounds on the side. The wolfhounds go back. The kings of Ireland had wolfhounds. So the the motto of the regiment is the same as the motto of the uh, Irish wolfhound, which is gentle when strove, fierce when provoked. So this is this is really taken off. I mean, you launched in November. You thought you would have enough for three months. You had enough for a few weeks. You've put more out there. Uh, what what's what's next? What's next for the brand? You um, obviously you have a, a great whiskey. Will there be other expressions? Are you going to stick to the one expression? What are uh, what's in the future? Yeah. There's going to be a, a lot of things we've planned out. Right now, we've, we've only got six states. We have people that are knocking on the door for us to open up other states. Uh, probably the first thing that will come out next was to, uh, actually with a, a smaller size. Uh, and then the other expressions, I like to leave a little bit of a tease in there, but yes, there'll be some new pieces, uh, some older whiskeys, maybe some different finishes. But what we'd like to do is um, we'd like to lead and not follow. Right. So uh, it'll be fun to talk again and show the next piece when it comes out, and you'll be the first to know about it. Excellent. Is that so, fair? That's the way yeah, I no, that do. sounds wonderful. I'm, I'm a, of course, we are bourbonblog.com, but we're obviously fans of all whiskeys, and this is such a great whiskey that I think, um, for those of you watching, whether you're an Irish whiskey fan, whether you've had some, probably most people watching this have, but if you're just beginning to get into Irish whiskeys, this is a really different expression from whiskeys that you will have had in the past. Um, I'm really impressed with this, uh, and it's really delicious. A beautiful bottle, too, with such history, and that supports um, and honors a, a great uh, a great group there, great trust, and a great regimen. It's really good. It's really good stuff. Yeah, and, and the website uh, we need to tell everybody about is Fighting 69th Whiskey. That's where they can go to actually track down. Um, yeah, fighting, Fighting69thWhiskey.com. And whiskey with an E, the way the uh, the Irish spell it. Whiskey with an E. There's there's some of those uh, folks over across the pond that use the KY, but this is there it is. Fighting 69th whiskey.com. Go on there so you can actually track the whiskey down, and of course find them on social uh, and and like it, and just because there's such a story here. I mean, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of brands that. Um, that have a good product, but they don't have quite the story. But this is a story that goes back many, many, many years in a way that you've been able to find to um, to honor that story with a very spectacular um, whiskey. And it's, right. it's so cool to have all of you joining from New York, New Jersey, Kentucky. I'm over in Indiana. It's it's a fun uh, it's a fun gathering all around a glass of uh, Irish whiskey tonight. Uh, but so uh, just so. I guess one question to ask you guys, even though this is, um, you know, you came out in November, very, very popular. You're a fairly new brand that has launched during um, during COVID, you know, a time when many things are shut down and bars and restaurants. Um, what's it What's it been like for you all as a brand, you know, getting the word out uh, during, during the shutdown? Um, we so, just, so getting the word out. We just, it, it's amazing um, how many on a, a website people... for across the country. Go ahead. Scott, yeah. I, I can't see you. Go on. You take this. Go ahead. Whoever wants to take it. I'm sorry. You can all talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so we so one of the one of the things we found with this brand yep. is you know, most brands have to do a lot of uh you, you know, we'll call it, you know, active messaging and media and, and the whole kind of things, you know, the big brands come out and they do big campaigns and everything else. What we found is we have so many people seeking us out because of the story. And when the story spreads, you know, we're answering questions. So, so we get a lot of inquiries through, so, you know, through our uh, social media pages, through the website, and then just through our connections, you know, uh, through Colonel Tierney and, and and others, you know, and other veterans of the regiment, um, we we get inquiries all the time saying, "Gosh, this is such an amazing story." You know, ancient order of Hibernians in the various markets. Could you please come and be the guest speaker at our monthly meeting and and talk to us and taste the whiskey and and wow, this is our brand. You know, have the and Emerald Society. So there's a lot of uh, you know, first responders and law enforcement, et cetera, that have Irish heritage and 
firefighters and policemen and veterans and their families. And they're seeking us out, finding out about the brand and saying, wow, can you come and, and talk to us and give us a little, uh, you know, history of the brand, let us taste the whiskey, et cetera, et cetera. And so we're finding all of these different groups that are interested. So, um, you know, while we have been, you know, on, on lockdown and in quarantine, uh, the nice thing is we've been able, we, we do a lot of these type uh, meetings every week. We'll call them virtual tastings in certain markets and we have certain uh you know retailers and certain groups that are saying hey look what we're going to do is we're going to have people go out we're going to have them get bottles and then we'll do a zoom virtual tasting with you and we, and we do this kind of a session with people right. so it's really worked out great do we wish we could go out into bars and irish pubs and restaurants etc of course we do uh but it's the next best thing right now we're all sort of adapting and and uh, figuring out, you know, how to do these uh, virtual, virtual everything these days. Right. No, that's that's uh, that's so helpful. That's yeah. yeah. Uh, so what we're going you know, to is more. Thing, of uh, right, I can see. I can see a picture in uh, Colonel Tierney. If you you want to talk a little bit about? It, I can see in your uh, screen there. I know. Uh, Chris and I and you developed this, uh, this toasting box. You want to oh, talk right. a little bit about that? Chris, do you have one? Or... Yeah, they, uh, I'm seeing uh, Colonel. I think we may, he might have uh, disconnected. We'll wait for a moment. He'll, he'll, if he comes right back in, I'm sure he will. I'll add him right back to the stream. What, what is the toasting box then that, you're, um, that you were mentioning? So Chris, talk about the toasting box. Well, that actually Chris, Chris had the well, idea and here said, "Wow, there it is, there it is." He's back. You know, there's there this, this great thing I've back. seen out there, and this would be a great presentation kit, etc. Is Jim back? Yes, he is. He's right there. So what, he's, now, he, the story on this is that you know, we've seen too many boxes that there have two is. glasses. Now, when we're together with friends, especially Irish whiskey, you've got more than two friends. So this box. If we get back to Jim with the camera, uh, this box doesn't hold two glasses. It's got 10 of them. And they're not shot glasses. They're two and three quarter ounces each. And we made the box look like a World War I artillery box. So it's designed for football game or for um, for man caves. Wow. Not to be chauvinistic. But um, it's, it's well received. And it's... Um, the first thing you have to do is make sure that each glass doesn't drip, so you have to try them out. And uh, luckily, 10, 2, and 3-quarter ounce glasses will kill a bottle of Irish whiskey. But they're, they're just coming out. They're going to sell them on the regiment. So actually, the regiment sells them, and the um, they will actually the money goes towards the uh, historical trust, towards the uh, the group and everything else. And again, sure. this is one of the best things about working with this brand is that we get to make it, but the money goes back detecting those, taking care of those that help us. And that's been since well before COVID. That's been since October 1, now our last year. And I know it's going to go on in perpetuity. That's a great, that's one of the best feelings about it. Uh, Colonel yeah. takes care of that all the time. He's watching out for everybody. It's, that, that's a beautiful box. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And very yeah. well presented there. So, yeah, so it, it's exclusively available through the regiment and you know the website will be up soon uh, the, the the regimental trust website which is separate but right now we've had met we we, we produced a small number just as samples and wow um <laughs> they didn't last long but uh so so really this isn't it's it's an exclusive uh uh, item that will support the trust, and we, you know, we everything we do is really, uh, you know, we launch the brand, but we want to make sure that you know the mission really of the brand is to support the trust. And so those boxes will will be available at some point through the um, you know, the the uh, regiment website will go online probably in the next two or three weeks, and it'll have a store and and various items. Like the sweater or the shirt that uh, Chris is wearing, um, the flags. Or the coins that you pointed out. 
and then the, the, the fighting uh, 69th Irish whiskey stuff also. So that's that's very exciting. Beautiful box. Beautiful way to order uh, to to recognize that. Uh, Chris is there uh, watching from the 256th Brigade. Thank you for watching, and Dennis and Howard. Uh, so many great people watching tonight, and uh, wow, what a what a what a fun pleasure to have so many great guys there joining me, talking Irish whiskey from across the country. And uh, if you did happen to join this broadcast uh, midway through or right at the end, definitely go back. It'll this will be up permanently. Watch it on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, and we're also going to be um, putting it up on our podcast channel too. The audio of it. Uh, just look up bourbonblog.com wherever you listen to podcasts so that you can uh, listen as you're as you're traveling or wherever you may be. So um, so this is great. So we'll definitely keep everyone posted about your whiskey on bourbonblog.com. And um, uh, this is lovely whiskey, gentlemen. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us. Uh, and uh, the toast the toast that you all do is it uh, is there an Irish to the regiment. regiment to the regiment to the regiment? Well. We'll all raise another toast and have another sip of whiskey. And okay, we'll try. We'll try. Maybe try it an old-fashioned later, as you uh, as you suggested there, Scott. To the regiment. To the regiment. Cheers, gentlemen. Thank right. you so much. To the regiment. before, to those here now, to those in the future. Cheers. Thank you, gentlemen, and thank you all for uh, for tuning in all across the country. And I think we even had a few. Um, international viewers again make sure you watch us every night tomorrow night we'll have um my my friend matt jamie of bourbon barrel foods joining us somebody else joining us from louisville there he'll be showcasing some of his bourbon barrel foods we'll be making some cocktails with some of his bitters and all kinds of great stuff for your friday night so uh so tune in and uh, and go find this whiskey it's great stuff thanks guys so much appreciate it thank you thank you all Thank you, guys. Yeah, good, to see, good to see you again, Tom. Yeah, you too. Yeah, we're offline.